Welcome to the Bald Brad Show. Our lead story of the day is regarding Bud Light and the Washington Post trying to spin the whole idea as to why their sales are plummeting. Before we get into anything today, support a true American patriot by hitting that like and subscribe button. Leave us a short, sweet comment down below. The question of the day is, if you drink beer, have you bought an Anheuser-Busch product in the last few months? Let us know in the comment section below. Well, again, folks, our lead story here is all about Anheuser-Busch. We first here have the Washington Post spinning this whole thing as to why their sales are plummeting. And then the other side of this is Anheuser-Busch is coming out and saying, hey, we hear all of you and we're going to make some changes here. So the Washington Post attempted to spin Bud Light's rapid descent in popularity as an organic change rather than a response to the brand's short-lived but disastrous partnership with trans-identifying activist Dylan Mulvaney. Quote, Bud Light sales fall in U.S. as Mexico's Modelo gains popularity. The headline read on an article published Wednesday. But the sub-headline suggested that even though the brand had been targeted by boycotts, it had likely lost its perch as America's most popular beer because of a long-term trend. Really? <laughs> said, Does anybody believe that? Hey, but this is what you get from the media trying to spin everything. Well, Bud Light has seen has been targeted rather by a recent boycott, but consumers might be moving away from the brand anyway amid stagnation for domestic beer in general. It's amazing. Anybody that believes this is, is an absolute idiot. Okay, Tim Pool came out and said so as much, and we'll get there in just one moment, but does anybody really believe that go, oh, well, all of a sudden, you know, people are just shifting away because they wanted a different beer. I mean, if you looked at the shelves nowadays, that... That's all that's left is Anheuser-Busch and people are buying other product as a result of the boycott, but people are buying their product beforehand. That's why they had a massive market drop because people stopped buying the product of which they were buying previously. But when you have these leftist media outlets going out of their way to consistently push the narrative that they've been pushing, which is a progressive leftist narrative, this is the type of stuff you get this hocus pocus weird maneuver here of spinning that we see all the time from the Biden administration, the Democrat party, the progressive left, Karine Jean-Pierre, Joe Biden. I mean, you name it, they're always spinning it. Critics immediately pointed to the extremely rapid drop-off in sales, which had coincided almost exactly with Bud Light's ill-fated partnership with Mulvaney and the brand's decision to place two marketing executives connected to said partnership on leave and said that to suggest the two weren't connected required a level of disbelief that they just couldn't muster. So you had Tim Pool. <laughs> Yeah, Tim Pool from TimCast go on Twitter and said, man, imagine being so stupid you fall for this shit. I think regular people are finally realizing the media just lies about everything. Yes, literally everything. And I think that's why there's certain podcasts out there that have grown in the last, I don't know, 10 roughly years like TimCast. You have, well, Joe Rogan's been around for a while, but you have literally the Daily Wire with Ben Shapiro, Michael Knowles, Andrew Clavin. Like there's certain outlets that call out the media's hypocrisy, which is what we do here on the Bald Brad Show and expose them for what they're doing of spinning, spinning, manipulating, rather than doing their job, which is to bring the truth and be kind of that fourth check on the government. There's three branches of the government. They all check one another. But the, the journalists out there were supposed to be kind of that fourth check and bring truth to the American people and expose whatever's going on. And they stopped doing that. So rather than being a fourth check of government, they're just now going and coinciding with whatever the government's doing and massaging the shoulders of the Democrat Party consistently, consistently. Well, a 25% drop in sales was going to happen anyway. Holy Lord, you gotta be kidding. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. WAPO is indistinguishable from parody. 100% agree. I mean, if you look at what the left is doing in the Democrat Party, it's it's satire. Like if we made these jokes 20 years ago when we were kids or a little bit younger, folks. I mean, it was taken as a joke, it was taken as hysterical, satire, comedy, make believe, not gonna happen, maybe a little bit of truth. Now, when you do the exact same thing, it's not satire anymore. It's just real. And it's tough to even joke around because you're like, man, I don't know if that's much of a joke anymore because that's just what's happening. Like before you used to talk about homeless people defecating in front of children, and all those things. It's like, yeah, it was dark humor back then, but now it's just happening in LA, Chicago, Philadelphia, Washington, DC, New York City. I mean, you name it, it's happening. Or, or you have some sort of bit that they used to do back in the day. Now it's just truth. It's just purely comical. Well, imagine believing this if you really think that Bud Light's drastic drop in sales is from consumers being tired of domestic beer. I have a B 
Each front home to sell you in Iowa. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Radio host Buck Sexton added, the left will be increasingly desperate to convince conservatives that their highly successful campaign against Bud Light wasn't effective after all and definitely shouldn't be duplicated against other woke targets. I mean, targets, you know, no pun intended because targets taking a massive hit right now. I mean, everybody that's going with this LGBTQ plus pride idea, Americans just in general have had enough and conservatives are a big part of that market space in all consumer products and services. So now that we're finally rising up, now it's kind of bringing alarmism to these corporations that are losing billions and billions of dollars. But again, again, we have to understand this because I don't think a lot of people really see how destructive the left is. And again, I wrote an entire book on the left destroying America, Trojan horse, how the left is destroying America. This is just one avenue. Folks, they will literally destroy entire corporations. You're seeing that with Disney right now. Disney is being destroyed by these executives pushing this leftist progressive idea. You can have gay characters all you want, but it's not just about pushing out gay characters or trans characters and all this stuff. You're pushing it out on our children. And that's kind of where Americans have had enough of all this. You're pushing it out on our children, whether it's in school, whether it's it's heck in the media, whether it's hell, just everywhere, billboards, advertisements, you name it, it's there. That's where the main problem is. Conservatives, Republicans went along with the whole thing of like, hey, if you want to be gay, that's fine. More of a, a, a liberalism type type of viewpoint of like, hey, just leave us alone. We're going to leave you alone. We're not going to push our religious viewpoint on you. Don't push your, your viewpoint on us. You know, we can go our merry way. We're all Americans at the end of the day. But what's taking place is you have these executives that will drive these corporations into the ground and they haven't woken up to it. These corporations have not woken up to the fact that these people will lose you billions of dollars and not give two iotas about the company. Whereas you look back in the day, a lot of employees really wanted to see the, the company and the corporation progress. They cared about it. They put their sweat, blood, and tears into that corporation. Yes, for a paycheck, but also because they believed in what that corporation is doing. These people want to destroy these corporations from the inside out. They don't care about the bottom number. And these corporations, again, still haven't woken up. So speaking of still haven't woken up, Anheuser-Busch released a statement on Friday. So right before the weekend, in response to the backlash that the company triggered earlier this year, when one of its brands, Bud Light, decided to partner with a controversial transgender activist for a paid marketing engagement. So sales for Bud Light have fallen more than 25% wild. That's why you go to any grocery store, any Target, Walmart, heck, you name it. That's all that's left is Anheuser Bush products. And its competitors have since seen a large increase in their sales. As I've mentioned, and I got backlash, by the way, from some people, when we had uh, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank talking about this whole idea. And I was saying, hey, Bud Light, if they want to recover, they just need to go dark for like a long time. And it kind of contradicted what Mr. Wonderful was saying. Cause I was saying, hey, he's like, oh, we'll just go dark for a couple months. I'm like, no, no, no. You need to go dark from like six months to a year. I'm not saying go fully dark. What I mean by is you need to sit there and just leave everybody alone and figure out your branding, what you were going to need, what you want and need to do, which is going to be downsizing at the end of the day. But I got pushed back on that. And I said, I said, what Bud Light didn't realize was, there's a huge opportunity for people to go and get a different type of beer on the shelf. And it's a really easy to look to the right one inch and grab a beer that maybe you were thinking about trying in the past. Maybe that's fat tire or Newcastle. Hell I'm in the craft beer or I love, I love uh, IPAs, double IPAs. If you get a triple IPA, absolutely phenomenal, but they didn't understand. I, I'm assuming that you could just go grab a different beer and the boycott was relatively easy. I got pushed back for saying something obvious like that because people's brain don't work sometimes. Well, enough of that. Other brands for Anheuser-Busch have also taken a significant hit, including Budweiser. That was 11.2% drop. Michelob Ultra, 6.5%. Bush Light, 5.2%. And Natural Light, 4.9%, according to the numbers released last month. Anheuser-Busch CEO, Brandon uh, Whit Whitworth. Weird name. Appeared <laughs> to acknowledge with his most recent statement that the backlash the company is facing is having a significant impact at the company. Here we go. Here's a quote. Here's a quote. We recognize that over the last two months, the discussion surrounding our company and Bud Light has moved away from beer. And this has impacted our customers, our business partners, and our employees. The statement began. We are a beer company and beer is for everyone. He said that the company was announcing three important actions as we continue to move our business forward in the light of backlash. First, we're investing to protect the jobs of our frontline employees. Basically saying there's probably some da downsizing going on here, which, gee, what did I say a few months ago was something they needed to do? And I got pushback on was probably to downsize. And so, so they're saying, hey, 
kind of the ones that have been around here for a while are frontline employees. We need to protect and take care of. And a part of that also goes into kind of those frontline employees. They're actually the drivers that are being harassed by people. If you see a Bud Light driver, folks, they're an employee. Okay. Stop, stop hounding them, leaving them alone. They're just trying to pay their bills here. So that's kind of one aspect of what they're talking about. It goes, it goes hand in hand. Second, we are providing financial assistance to our independent wholesalers to help them support their employees. <laughs> you can't believe this. He also said in his final point, which was addressed to the company's valued customers and consumers that the company hears you. No, you don't. No, you don't. That you're, you're, you're making this statement months and months later. After this whole backlash, about a month or two or a month and a half into it, when this boycott was going on, there was clear uproar about this whole thing. Mega pushback. Uh, they were they were still sponsoring pride events like they were going out of their way to sponsor these pride events amidst this backlash that was taking place. You don't you don't hear anybody. Sure, you hear it. Everybody hears it. I mean, the whole world hears what, what you did and you're getting these huge, huge backlash. But you can hear somebody but not take any action and still hasn't apologized. That's the crazy thing here. You, you haven't apologized anything because the, the ESG score and the, and the woke movement's too too important to your customers. So you're going to sit there and try to BS us in the same way Washington Post tried to BS the American public by spinning this whole thing. Our summer advertising launches next week. And you can look forward to Bud Light reinforcing what you've always loved about our brand. That it's easy to drink and easy to enjoy, he said. As we move forward, we will focus on what we do best, brewing great beer and earning our place in moments that matter to you. I, man, I, I just don't know if they can get out of this hole. And that's kind of a question for all of you. Do you think Bud Light can turn this around? Do you think Anheuser-Busch can turn this around? Because I don't know, man. I think I think the damage, I think it cut people really deep. And it's going to take a long time to wound that. Uh, or, or should I say, uh, repair that wound? I mean, hell, I remember as a kid, as a, as a, as a, even now as a man, right? You look back at those old Bud Light posters with the women in the bikinis and stuff like that, wearing the American flag bikini and all that other stuff, holding a brew. Uh, look, maybe go back to that, huh? Maybe push what the people, your consumers, your customers were drinking, and looking at that whole thing, and get back to maybe what uh, that used to be, pro America, pro values. Uh, We'll see though. So let me know what you think about that one in the comment section below. In other head spinning news, and this this is actually a jab against Republicans, folks. So uh look, our our logic here is linear. If we're gonna hound the Democrats and and progressive left for doing something, if a Republican does the exact same thing or does something stupid, we're gonna hound them too. Folks, you have a bill requiring all health insurance companies in Nevada, including Medicaid, to cover quote medically necessary surgeries related to gender dysphoria for both adults and children has now been signed by a Republican governor, Joe Lombardo. What an idiot. This is, this is wild. This is wild. So now not only do you have Democrats going after mutilating children, now you have Republicans doing the exact same thing. So as a country here, what are we doing? It's one thing if it's an adult, it's one thing if it's an adult, you have a child that can't make certain decisions. There's a whole, uh, on the Daily Mail, there's a whole story right now of a girl or a man, can't remember, I think it was a girl, uh, age 13, had gender transition surgery and now is pissed because with her gender dysphoria, nobody told her that, oh, well, you can't, it's not, it's not really like, you can't go back on it. You can't, you can't basically mend the mistake that you made when you were 13 now that you're 18. You can't put back on your breasts. You can't create a new, you can't fix that wound that's down there. I'm trying to be correct here on, on YouTube because YouTube is serious about uh, banning people and, and censoring people that are cer using certain words. The text will highlight on the back end and the captions and they'll trigger some sort of thing on us. So with this, you have Republicans and Democrats now going after children. Isn't that just lovely? I'm a registered Republican, folks. I'm a registered Republican. Probably always will be. Not if this continues, folks. We might need to start a new party here. On Monday, Lombardo signed SB 163, which requires coverage for the medically necessary treatment of conditions relating to gender dysphoria and gender incongruence, which I've never heard of gender incongruence. I'm going to look that one up here on the end of the show. If somebody wants to actually post in the comment section for everybody else what gender incongruence is, let us know in the comment section below. The bill has already passed the state assembly and Senate, both controlled by Democrats along party lines. Some leftists are celebrating Lombardo's decision to sign the bill. That's not a shocker. The left love going after children. And I'm sorry, so do the Democrats. If you want to look at an old school Democrat that doesn't really jive with all this stuff, look at the Kennedys. Look at even Kennedy now. So Kennedy back in what the 60s, I think it was with John and Robert. 
And now you have another Kennedy. If you look at what they go with, they're more like centrist. They're like old school Democrats. Nowadays, the Democrats are all for this. And the reason why I say the Democrats are for this is because literally Joe Biden, who is the face of the, the Democrat Party, uh, is all for this stuff, which has come out on like public service announcements. Some leftists, again, are celebrating this whole decision at time at a time when states across the country are passing draconian laws to restrict trans and non-binary people's rights to exist. Nevada is going to do the opposite. This comes from a Democrat in Las Vegas. That's insane, folks. That's insane. Let me read that to you again. At a time when states across the country are passing draconian laws to restrict trans and non-binary people's rights to exist. So if you don't get a surgery, all of a sudden your right doesn't exist. This is what these people believe, man. It's why it's so wild. It is so wild. Again, nobody cares if you're an adult. Let's be clear. No, I should say nobody, but you understand what I mean by that. Many people don't care if you're an adult and you want to, I don't agree with it, but it's your life. If you want to have, if you have gender dysphoria and you want to go get a surgery, you're an adult, go do what you want. I don't think people should get plastic surgery either, but they can still go do it. I'm not going to tell you not to. I don't, again, I can't emphasize that. I don't think you should, but the, the issue is surrounding going after children. They're too young to make that decision. They're too young to freaking pick out their own dinner. They're, they're eating paste in the classroom. They can't solve mathematical equations. That's not even that hard. And you're going to tell me they could sit there and make a life altering decision. Why don't we just start letting children drive? Why don't we let children drive vehicles? Why not? At like, I don't know, third grade level. Why don't, why don't you let a third grade drive a car? Oh, that's, that's too risky. Or, oh, oh, that might, that might injure somebody else. Yeah, maybe. But, but they're able to change their sex and have that type of uh, uh, hold on their life decisions. Why not, why not drive a car? Why not uh, be able to order beer, smoke a pack of cigarettes, sign up for the military? I don't know. Get a job at, at a third grade level. Why not? I mean, it sounds, it sounds ludicrous when I say these things. Of course, I'm being a little bit facetious, but you understand kind of the generalized point of what I'm making. Check this out. So uh, home can mean Nevada for people of all genders as a direct result of the hard work of gender, transgender and civil rights organizers. If you can just somebody answer this to me, and this is actually probably a, a more realistic viewpoint is I'm clearly white and pale, right? Why can't I identify as a black person? The reason why I say that, or should I say African-American, why can't I sit there and, and, and shift uh, in, in terms of race? That's probably more of a social construct than actual sex is. I mean, you look at Elon Musk, Elon Musk is just as white as I am, but he's African-American. So, or, 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 or just again, a social construct, just kind of across the board, it's, it's probably more in line on a philosophical level and as well as a linear logic in terms of transitioning your race rather than your sex. There's probably more of an argument for that than what we're even seeing here. But again, that's for a whole different argument. Nevada has for a very long time been a live and let live type of state, according to Brooke Mayloff of Transgender Allies Group, which in 2021 also worked for the Department of Health and Human Services. Wasn't it, there's a whole group here that we that we uncovered uh, from Matt Walsh that was basically signing letters of gender dysphoria to allow and kind of open up the doorway for insurance companies to pay for this medically necessary gender transition. Like if you didn't have gender transfor, uh, dysphoria in there, then you weren't going to get it covered. And so what Matt Walsh of the Daily Wire uncovered was these people with these transgender groups, even though the person is saying they don't have gender dysphoria, we're still putting it in there anyways so that insurance will cover this stuff. So if their insurance is covering something, uh, covering a certain transition surgery, like literally lopping off the guy's testicles that they don't even need, guess whose insurance goes up as well? Yours and I. This is where all this is going. It's wild. And I'm glad to see that this governor has not been hijacked by the divisiveness uh, that has been seen by other states. So because you don't go along with having a child being mutilated rather than just waiting until they're 18 to make their own decision, you know, now, now, you're, uh, now, you're, now you're stopping trans people from existing. It's so wild. It's so wild. Indeed, in signing the bill, Lombardo, who just assumed office in January, diverged considerably from many Republican governors who have lately voted to ban or at least severely restrict such producers for minors in their respective states. Nevada RNC Betty woman who made an unsuccessful bid for attorney general last year slammed Lombardo in a series of tweets. Well, while other states protect children from general, genital mutilation, Nevada just serve them right up. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's, again, it's not about the adults. It's about the children. But the left don't understand that. And they will spin and manipulate it just as we saw in the first segment with Wobble and the Bud Light story. 
They will spin it and manipulate it. You actually saw Kareem Jean-Pierre. We didn't cover it last week. Kareem Jean-Pierre was asked a question about this whole thing. And she said, and it goes, I wish we had it. She, she sat there and told the guy that he was being dangerous for even bringing this up. Is that dangerous? Cutting off a child's genitals and castrating them for life. To the point where some, sometimes they won't even be able to have children ever. And if they change their mind later on, which is probably what they end up doing about 80, 90% of the time, they just end up being gay or lesbian. Uh, you know, they, they can't reverse that. So they just push this upon people. And by people, I mean minors. Rather than just waiting until they're an adult, they can make that judgment when they're an adult. I don't understand it. And this whole idea of like, well, if we don't, if we don't allow children to mutilate themselves or we're, we're allowing them to make the decision to mutilate themselves, then all of a sudden they don't exist anymore. I mean, that's, that's, that's the topic that we've seen time and time again from the left and they will continue to push it because if, if you don't let a child mutilate themselves, they're not able to exist and live. And one of the arguments too, with parents, it's kind of a disgusting one is that what these doctors or these quote unquote doctors. And for those that aren't audio listening with air quotes is they're saying, oh, if you don't, if you don't give your kid the surgery, they're going to kill themselves. They're going to commit suicide. So either they have the surgery or they're going to die. That's kind of the two dilemmas. I mean, who makes that kind of dilemma? Wild. I know I keep saying that, but folks, we're living in a time where satire is no longer satire. Comedy is truth. There's always been a truth to comedy, but now it's just happening. I'm not saying this is comedic by any means. This is, this is literally, this is, this is some dark stuff. You're going to look back on history on this and go, you're telling me a, a civilized country like the United States was sitting there mutilating children and conducting mass experiments on children like, like we are now with trans people. A lot of these people that are, that are trans as well, that are, that are also getting castrated are, are autistic. So you're literally, <laughs> there's so much here. There's so much here. I got to stick to the article. Lombardo also recently signed another bill which offers additional mental health care to Nevada prisoners who consider themselves transgender or gender non-conforming. However, he vetoed a bill which would have protected medical professionals who provide gender-related treatment from losing their license. In his veto message, Lombardo claimed the measure would have prevented his office from ensuring that all gender-affirming care related to minors comports with state law. I mean, he needs to be ousted, you guys. That's where you rise up with your vote. You get out there from the state of Nevada and you oust this guy. He doesn't need to be, be governor. He might have a Republican title, but he's a rhino. Okay, He's a Democrat. He's a progressive leftist. This is one of the main pillars of the Democrat Party now is pushing the stuff about going after children, whether it's the grocery store, whether it's through media, whether it's through news, whether it's through movies, whether it's articles, whether it's in the school system. They're targeting your children left and right. And at some point, you got to rise up, say enough's enough. Just leave them alone. You know what I mean? Allow the parents. If the parents want to push that whole thing, that's what the parents are there for. You know, teachers aren't there to push this whole thing. You know, politicians shouldn't be there pushing this. It's up to the parents who sit there and mold their child. And what I also find interesting, and let me know if you agree with this in the comment section below or the live chat. Did anybody else find it interesting that it's usually leftist, progressive, or Democrat parents that are for this whole trans stuff and sometimes even trans themselves or gay themselves or part of the LGBTQ community that their kids end up being part of the LGBTQ plus community as well. Like it goes hand in hand, right? You usually see they have like colorful hair or they're kind of like, you know, short haircut or whatever it is. And you can, I mean, they have a look, right? In the same way that I have, I have a look here, right? American flag, beard, right? I look like a conservative Republican, like smelling on me. But I mean, they have a look themselves and it's like, why is it, why is it always their children? Very rarely. I mean, you'll, you'll have it where it's like a normal family. will will have like a trans or, or gay or lesbian child or whatever it may be, but it's, it's generally, you always see it. So it makes you wonder if they're struggling with gender identity and they're having identity issues, who's kind of enabling that gender identity and that confusion in their mind. Oh yeah, of course you can get it from media. But it also makes you wonder, is it coming from the parents as well? Let me know in the comment section below. And our last news story here, we have Elon Musk issues simple stinging challenge to President Joe Biden. Folks, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And also head over to baldbrad.com, pick yourself up a mug here, Drab, have a cup of coffee with us, a cup of Joe. Look, I understand things are a little bit pricey, folks. Look, we're dealing with Biden inflation, but also it goes all back into the show. You are supporting an American patriot. At least you know where your money's going and somebody that supports your values here of supporting america not trying to drive it right into the ground baldbrad.com links in the description below so billionaire businessman and twitter owner elon musk challenged president joe biden's social media team to give the 80 year old the password to his twitter account saturday in a tweet thread overflowing with humorous jabs and cold hard fact i don't even know if joe biden knows how to use twitter i don't know if joe biden knows how to use a cell phone this guy doesn't even know how to use his own shoes okay he, doesn't, he can't go up a flight of stairs he can't go down the flight of stairs he hits a golf ball backwards he doesn't know how to use a golf club properly he doesn't know where to hit a golf ball you're gonna think this guy's gonna be able to use twitter i don't i don't think so but who's 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 running the twitter huh who's running the tweet 
it's about time the super wealthy, this is from Joe Biden, by the way, this is the tweet that he made on June 17th. It's about time the super wealthy start paying their fair share. President Biden tweeted from his personal account Saturday afternoon. You gotta love this. You gotta love this. Again, many of you don't know I was a tax account for a lot of years. It blows my mind. So it's, well, they're not paying their fair share. What does that mean? What does it mean? Somebody let me in the comment section below. What is the fair share? If you ask any Democrat or any progressive left person that, that spouts this stuff, and some, some conservatives, Republicans, by the way, say the same thing. Oh, you gotta pay your fair share. What does that mean? I still don't know. Again, I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal. I wasn't like a, an advanced tax accountant and all these things, but I did do it for some period of time. I don't know what that means. Everybody's share is different. So if you go with the Bernie Sanders route of 1%, that it's not like the same people you guys are in the 1% every single year. Some people are, but there's wealth mobility in this country. You sell your house. So let's say you made $50,000. Let's just say you made $50,000 a year. You sold your property in California and made 1.2 million or roughly, let's just say somewhere in that range, or you sold your business, something that bumps you up for that one year into the top 1%. So now you just get, now you're not always the 1%. Now you just get royally screwed for that one year because you have to pay a massive amount of capital gains tax or whatever it may be on that business or that, that property that you may sold. And now you're going to drop back down lower the following year because you only make $50,000 a year. I mean, it, it, what's the fair share? So that person that maybe even was low income, by the way, that sold that piece of property, moving to a different state, now is in that threshold of that 1% for one year, now drops down, you totally screw them. I don't know what it means. I know I'm repeating myself, but I don't know what it means by fair share. You see this with people with, with, with applying for businesses, right? Or should I say applying for, for employment? You can be making $40,000 a year and you only need $40,000 a year to survive. But then you could be going in for that job, that same job as a $40,000 person, but you need $90,000 to survive because your share might be different. I understand this is different in taxes, but this is more of, of somebody's living situation. So Democrats just want to spout things out to the air about, well, I need my fair share. Or I think somebody should pay their fair share. What does that mean? Everybody's situation is different. Let the rich be rich. I don't care. Why? I don't understand why we're always going after rich people. Like, when did they turn evil? Like just say, just say theoretically, right? I am not rich. I am not nowhere near being rich, folks. If if for some reason, say the bald Brad show blows up and stuff like that and it gets big, right? Let's just say theoretically, I hope it does. Well, let's say I started becoming rich. Like at what point did I turn into an a-hole? Like wh at what point did I turn evil? Do you know what I mean? Like I, I would be the same person I was in the same way that if you just sold your house tomorrow and you made like $2 million and now you're in the top 1% for whatever business you sold or whatever it may be, like, did you just in the span of 24 hours become an a-hole and now you're evil and now you're now now you you deserve now you're part of the one percent the wealthy Do you understand what i'm saying it's so wild to me and i don't understand it if you're somebody that's for wealthy people paying their fair share please let me know what the hell you're talking about i just want to have a conversation around it because again is it are they supposed to be 90 percent tax 95 like sam seeger says like some of these people want you to be taxed like 90 percent. it is wild like, why would you want to innovate anything? Why would you want to create a business knowing that the government's just going to take everything from you above a certain threshold? Why would you want to sit there and build more capital? Why would you want to invest in R&D to make new products that people want to buy, knowing that the government's just going to take 90% of it? About two hours later, Musk responded with a usual unusual challenge. He requested that Biden be given the keys to his social media account. Not so subtly suggesting the gaff-prone octogenarian doesn't come up with his own tweets. Joe, he hasn't come up with his own thing in a while. He literally makes up stories about, he thinks it sounds, it's so terrible. I mean, he's so far gone. He thinks his son died in Iraq. His son did not die in Iraq. I mean, the amount of stories this guy makes up is, is baffling. But guess who the media, media cover for? Joe Biden. And who do they target? Donald Trump or any sort of other Republican or conservative. Please give him the password so he can do his own tweets. Please, I'm begging you, Musk wrote, responding to Biden's tweet. Musk challenged spread a number of responses ranging from Dr. Jordan B. Peterson Quip about the definition of super wealthy being those who have more money than Joe Biden. Yes. And the Democrat party. And he sent screenshots of the national debt clock. If you haven't looked at the national debt clock, folks, it's freaking terrifying. After joking about the, after the uh, joking remark about Biden's writing or not his own tweets, Musk took on a more sober tone. He slammed excess government spending saying that the burden is carried by those who can least afford it. Musk also included a prediction that the status quo would win the day. Folks, our government is spending an astronomical amount of money. And it's not a military. I'm so tired of people going, oh, we spent too much on military. It's one of the main functions of government. 
if you look at what we spend, roughly 70% of our budget is spent on social programs. 70% roughly, give or take, okay? That's insane. At some, you're going to have to cut it at some point. You're going to have to make some sort of decision at some point. You just can't keep funding this thing. It's wild. It's wild. And I understand no politician wants to touch it because people want their money. I get it. But you can grandfather people in. You're going to have to move some money around. But this whole idea that you're going to keep spending like we're doing, you guys... There's only ever been one country, I think, in Western civilization that's ever turned things around. And I believe that was Canada in the 70s. I could be wrong. I think it was Canada in the 70s or something like that. I'm reaching back in my memory. But basically, the odds of us turning this ship around, it's not good. It could be done, but you're going to be some seriously high taxes. It, it could happen in your lifetime, depending on your age. It could happen in my lifetime. I'm 34. It could happen in our kids' lifetime. At some point, it's going to happen. Or at some point, you're going to see, see a catastrophic event taking place. And I'm not sugarcoating that at all. You're going to see the biggest collapse of a country that in human history has ever seen. I don't think I'm joking. It's not like we owe, by the way, I just want to debunk some myths here. The, the first myth is that whole idea of, you know, uh, uh, oh, we have enough money to pay this off. No, we don't. No, we don't. We're going to get to a point where literally we're only going to be paying off the interest. I'd also like to debunk the whole myth of, well, China owns our bleep. China, I believe, only owns like 7 to 9% of our, our, our debt. Or at least, uh, oh, that's how much they have. That's how much we owe them, roughly 7 to 9%. I mean, it's a lot of money. Don't get me wrong when you're speaking of like $32 trillion. But at some point, this ship needs to be turned around. And again, the whole myth that we spend most of our money on military. No, no, military is like third or fourth on the list. It's social programs. If you don't believe me, you can literally go on government.gov website. Just look up the budget. To find it yourself and you can see the pie chart those who will actually be forced to carry the burden of excess government spending are lower to middle income wage earners as they cannot escape payroll tax correct even though the wealthy are the ones that pay almost all net tax in the country that's what i never got with the whole pay your fair share like how much do you want them to pay it, it, you gotta love that word fair right the, the the like the top percentage of wealth earners pay almost all tax in the united states so if you break it down, it's not fair at all, by the way, at all. They're going to keep pushing this. March 18th, President Biden tweeted that the average tax billionaire pay a 3%, including the same pay your fair share verbiage as Saturday's tweet. The tweet earned a community note, which is a Twitter's crowdsourced version of a fact checking service. I mean, it's amazing that, you know, this whole stuff gets us. So check this out. The 3% number Biden is referring to is based on a value increase of held investments, not on their income. However, these investments can also lose value, which is why they are taxed when they are sold and become income, meaning it's called realized in accounting and finance. It's realized at that point. And I also point out Elizabeth Warren, the Democrat party. I hope you're sitting down for this. I understand it's a long uh, episode. And I'm going on a rant here, but it's a podcast. Elizabeth Warren, Warren wanted to tax unrealized capital gains. Let that sink in if you understand money. At one point, you can have an income and then a loss. I mean, what is there to tax? You don't know what's going to be what's going to be valued at whenever you sell it. You don't know what there's going to be an increase or decrease. I mean, that's how bad they want your money. Democrats are going to stop at nothing, folks. They take everything you have from you at nothing. They're, they're, they, they want all your money and it's going to be whatever they decide what your fair share is. They're going to decide for you, not, not you. Government's so frustrating. Calculating on that, the average tax rate for them is 25%, not three. Also, remember when they're going after Trump? Oh, he's not paying his fair share in taxes. He didn't even owe any, any federal income tax and blah, blah, blah year. We did his whole, uh, whole tax return uh, shebang here on the Bald Bradshaw like a year or two ago, maybe even longer. It's going to be longer because we've only been doing this for two and a half years. Folks, this whole idea of like, yes, maybe not paying a ton of federal tax and going, oh, there's a loophole. Please stop saying, for the love of God, anybody that wants to learn anything, stop saying loophole. It's, it's so annoying. There is no loophole. Accountants are just reporters at the end of the day. There's laws on the books. There's a tax code that we follow. It says, hey, you could do this, so you do it. Take this number, this calculation that we said you could do, and this is how you calculate it per what our rules are, and take that number and put it here, and it rolls over into this form. It rolls over into that form. Bada bing, bada boom. That's all it is. There is no loophole. I understand there's people that break the law, but that's not a loophole. That's just you breaking the law. So you're allowed to do certain things. Trump just rolled over his losses. Everybody, you and I could do that. Everybody does it. Hillary Clinton did it. And that's why there was that famous back and forth in the primaries when back when when it's Hillary versus Trump. 
And she's talking about, oh, well, he's, he's doing this loophole and all that. He's like, and they're like, Mr. Trump, did you, did you do this in your tax return? He's like, yeah, I took advantage of my losses in the same way that Hillary and her donors do the exact same thing. Everybody does that. You don't have to be, you don't have to be somebody wealthy to take a loss and have that roll over, by the way. So it's just this whole nonsense that people push here about your fair share or your loopholes. There's no loopholes. Please, for the love of God, if you hear anybody saying loophole, have them explain it to you because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. The same people have somebody else do their taxes are all of a sudden tax experts. I'm not even a tax expert, but I know when the freaking loophole is. And there's no loophole. You want to change it, change it. I, and you also have to love the aspect that Joe Biden is saying people need to pay their fair share. You had all three branches of government, you knucklehead. If you didn't think people are paying their fair share, why didn't you change it when you had all three branches of government? You could have done it very easily and you didn't. So it's just grandstanding once again. Typical. I paid more income tax than ever in the history of Earth for 2021. And we'll do that again in 2022, Musk repeated and tweeted in response. And then he also paid 53% taxes on his Tesla stock options, which must be lifting the average. Yeah, a little bit. That's insane. 53% tax. That's why people get out of California. If you make a lot of money, I don't know why you're living here. I've always said it. For some reason, I end up making a lot of money in life. I am out of here so quick because the, the tax, the amount I could be saving by not living in the state of California, by not paying state income tax is astronomical. If you're, if you're a wealthy person, I mean, that you could buy a house with that percentage of income tax. If you go to the state of California, if you move to Florida, just buy a house outright. I get the hell out of here so quick. And that's why you do. That's why you have a lot of wealthy people get the hell out of the state. The guy from Ballerstool does the exact same thing. Somebody asked him that same question. They go, why, why are you, he basically goes from Florida to New York, but he has a certain calculation. I forgot you have to spend a certain amount of days in a specific state to basically grab hold of that state in terms of filing your taxes. So he stays in Florida the majority of the time. People ask him, why do you do that? Well, he literally was able to make the same amount of money and whatever money he was able to save by living in the state of Florida, because there's no income tax compared to New York city that wants to take everything from you along with California. He was able to just buy a house. He has, he has the best of both worlds. But that, that's a loophole. That's a loophole. You don't like it, change it. Change it then. I'm so tired of people going, oh, it's a loophole or it's this or that. Just change it then. In 2021, Musk paid over $11 billion in taxes. What also people don't realize, you guys, when people talk about taxes, and you know, just going back to the whole Trump argument, if somebody teaches finance, obviously taxes as well. I like to debunk things. And the whole idea like he doesn't pay taxes. Yeah, he might not pay technically federal income tax on the end return per his taxes. He builds skyscrapers, you guys. He has property. The amount of property tax that guys pays is more than you'll probably make in your lifetime. And no offense, I'm not trying to belittle anybody. More than I make in my lifetime. The guy that, the sales tax that he pays is head spinning. Imagine all the product he has to buy to build a skyscraper, the steel, the concrete, the insurance. Understand it's not, I mean, the kind of a tax, but employee, the employee side of it on the tax, their payroll tax. I mean, the guy spends a lot of money in taxes. Don't give me this whole idea. He doesn't, he doesn't pay taxes. I'm so tired of that whole thing. Oh, he doesn't pay taxes. Yes, he does. The same way Musk pay taxes as well. You just don't see it on the, the end return at the end of the year because he's capitalizing on those losses. You don't like it, change it at the end of the day. But let me know what you think about this story uh, in the comment section below. What do you think the fair share is? And you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun here. If you could pick a, a, pick a tax number in terms of what you think people should be taxed at, uh, let me know. Do you think we should have a flat system? The argument against that is that you're actually hurting low-income earners because 10% of their money is a lot more than 10%, say, of a you know multi-million or whatever it may be. Or do you think we should stick with a progressive tax system? Uh, what tax do you think should be appropriate? I know it's kind of a detailed question, but we can have a lot of fun with it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for supporting the Bald Brad Show. Hey, folks, if you want to join us here, instead of giving money to you know these woke leftist outlets or these uh, media companies, we have a join tab. We would love for you to join us. Click it down below. It's $4.99 or uh, $9.99 if you want to get like really zealous. We would love for you to support us here. Uh, you know, at some point, uh, you know, who knows what could happen in terms of my employment with my jobs out there. Uh, I think it will come to a point, folks, where I'm going to ask you bigly, uh, bigly uh, to support me because, um, you know, when you're talking about politics, people think that that's who you are in real life in terms of that's what you're doing in the classroom and all these other places. I would love for you to support me nonetheless uh, so that we can kind of build up our community here and kind of get bigger so that, God forbid, something like that does happen in the future. Um, we have that safety net here because there is a good possibility at some point in the future, you guys, that I will be laid off from my job because they hear something or see something online that they don't like. 
Um, even though I don't talk like this in the classroom, this is not who I am in the classroom, uh, but you understand the political divisiveness that we are here as a country. So I asked, I do ask at some point here, you, you think about supporting because there might be a point here where uh, I just do a show where I say, hey, you know what, I, I lost my job. I need you to support or I go become an accountant and we no longer have the bald Brad show and I can't do this anymore because I'll be working the entire time. But hey, let's hope that never happens. Uh, pray for the show, pray for me. Um, nothing to worry about as of right now, but uh, do want to just kind of bring that up because that could be something in the future. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, head over to baldbrad.com. Everything's there. If you want to donate as well, it goes directly to me. There is a donation tab at baldbrad.com. Uh, there's also YouTube. You can buy the book. You buy merch, all that fun stuff. Heck, at the very least, just hit that like and subscribe button. Leave us a comment down below. And folks, I'll see you tomorrow here.